we enter into the time set aside for the sermon, the message for the day, uh, I'd like to introduce you to our scripture reading. It's going to be in Luke chapter 24, 13 through 32 is what we're going to read. But if you were fortunate enough to come to our sunrise service this morning, you read or you heard the first part of chapter 24, where women early on that first day of the week, they got up and they gathered together their spices and they started heading to the tomb to uh, put those spices on Jesus' body and all of that. Well, as they was getting closer to the tomb, they saw something. The giant stone that had sealed his body inside had been rolled away. And they run up to it and they recognize there is no body in that tomb. And they're wondering what's going on and finally they see two men standing there shimmering in white because they're really angels. And those two men, they say this, they say, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And with this, the women, they take off and they go running back to the, the other disciples and the apostles. And they tell them what they had just seen. And the apostles saying, Oh, these are women just being women. They're just gibberish. They probably got lost on the way and went to the wrong tomb. They didn't believe them. And yet Peter goes, you know what? I want to see this. And he takes off running. And he gets to the tomb and he looks inside. And sure enough, just as those women had seen, the tomb is empty. There's just some white linen cloths laying there where Jesus was. And so he too returns saying, it's true. And he's pondering, what does this possibly mean? The body is gone. And then we get to our scripture reading for this morning in Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13. And now that same day, two of them, two of the two disciples, two of them, We're going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and they discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked Jesus, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem that does not know the things that have happened there in these last days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, a powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was going to be the one that was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it has been the third day since all of this has taken place. In addition, some of our women, they amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our own companions, they went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them 
what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And so he went in and he stayed with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road? And he opened the scriptures to us. They got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on their way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. But now I want to have a very honest and frank conversation with you. I want to just be very honest with you, have a little heart to heart. No matter what we do here today for this virtual worship experience, no matter what Mary does on the organ or Carmen does with her voice and singing, no matter what we do here today... For most of us, things aren't going to feel right. They're not going to feel normal. For some of you, this may be the very first Easter that you are celebrating not sitting in a church pew. For some of you, this may be the very first Easter that you're not sitting in a pew within these walls in this very church. This is new. There won't be community or church Easter egg hunts. There won't be large family gatherings with a giant feast. There won't be a sense of normalcy. You know, and for many this week, more than the last three weeks, I mean, we've done this for three weeks now, this is week four, and yet for many of us here today on Easter Sunday is when we will truly recognize and emphasize and understand how far away we are from normal. When we turn on the news and we hear that nearly 2,000 people each day are dying in America, Because of the coronavirus, we recognize that things aren't normal. When we see that in Missouri, that each day over 200 people are infected with this virus, and over 100 people have died since March 7th, just in Missouri. When we see all the schools in Missouri have canceled in-person classes for the remainder of the year, when we listen to that top infectious doctor in America and he says he believes maybe we should never shake hands again to help contain the spread of not just this disease, but other viruses as well. When we hear these things, we realize that there's no such thing as normal anymore. And whatever we call normal that we had in February will never return. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. There's a lot of questions right now. There's a lot of anxiety and fear right now. What are we going to do? What is coming next? Welcome to the road to Emmaus. We are in a very similar situation emotionally as these disciples were as they were leaving Jerusalem, confused and uncertain. They had a bunch of questions on their minds. They had taken everything they'd known and probably thrown it away to follow Jesus who was going to be that Messiah that was going to raise Israel back up and now they're not sure what's going on. The tomb's empty but they haven't seen Jesus 
Are they supposed to go back to their families now as if nothing's ever happened? Well, that's not even possible. Those families know what they did. And they know that Jesus is now dead. What's going on? That's what's going on with these disciples. That's what's going on with each and every one of us at this time as well. And it is so easy to allow our grief and our anxieties and our uncertainties, so easy to allow our questions to blind us from the reality that God is with us. We can let this virus and our fears paralyze us into not seeing Christ as He is walking alongside us. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, they allowed that to happen. They didn't recognize Him. And He was right there. And then as Jesus is walking with them, He goes, well, what are you guys talking about? What's all this concern going on? What are you worried about? They said, "Are are you the only person that doesn't know what was going on in Jerusalem? Or do you, did you, have you been living under a rock for the last three days? And Jesus goes, no, I haven't been living under a rock. I've been dead behind one. And so Jesus goes, he doesn't say this, but I'm imagining in Jesus' mind all the things he could say. Oh, I know exactly what was going on. Let me tell you about Thursday night when I had my disciples and we had a meal together. Let me tell you about the disciple that betrayed me. Let me tell you about the disciple that denied me. Let me tell you about the kangaroo court that I went through. Let me tell you about the scourgings that I got. Let me tell you about being nailed to a cross. I know what was going on. In fact, Jesus... Not only did he know what was going on, he's the only one at this point that fully even understood what was going on. He knew exactly what was going on, that he was saving his people. That if you put your faith in Christ, you will be saved. He is that redeemer. But he's the only one that fully understood what was going on. And yet these disciples on the road go, Do you not understand what's happening? He's the only one that did. Much like in the first century. Much like those disciples that even after they get back and they say, hey, Simon Peter has seen the resurrected Jesus. Even then, when they know that Jesus arose, They didn't know what was going on. There was still a lot of uncertainty about what it all means and what it meant. But I will tell you one thing. Every single one of them knew things were never going to be the same again. And you know, God, one of the things when He created the world and created humanity, He gave us free will. He gave us a brain to make decisions and He gives us choices to make. And at this point in human history, in our history, I see us as having basically two choices. The first one's this. We can lament, meaning we can grieve and we can be angry or whatever, but we can lament what we have lost And we can strive and do everything we can to get back to the status quo that was February. That we can stick our heads in the sand and say, oh, none of these last couple months happened. Let's just go back and reset to February 20th or whatever. That's one option. The other option is we can lament our loss because certainly we are losing something. But then we can get on board with what God is doing in this nation and in this world at this time. And you know, we might not fully know what He's doing. The disciples back then didn't fully know what a risen Christ actually meant. We might not understand what God's doing or fully see what God is doing, but we need or we have the option of getting on board with Him 
to accomplish His will and His mission. We can open our eyes to a new life. We can open our eyes to a new church and a new revitalized Christian experience. That is what is being offered at this time. You know, perhaps another way of putting this is we do have those two choices. We can allow our insecurities to paralyze us and separate us from God. Or we can seek Him. We can seek His will. We can open our eyes and see that Jesus is walking right alongside us even in this time. And we can be with Him and allow us Allow Him to teach us who He is fully and what we are supposed to be doing at this time. One of the things I think about when I read the story on the road to Emmaus, it takes about two hours to walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's about a two-hour journey. At some point in that journey, they'd already left Jerusalem, Jesus catches up to him. I don't know if he's running behind him to catch up or whatever, but somehow he catches up to him. And in that short time, maybe an hour and a half, maybe let's say it's all two hours, that's okay. In two hours, Jesus teaches them all about Christ from Moses, the first five books of the New Test- Old Testament, And through the prophets, he teaches them everything concerning him. That is learning with a fire hose in your mouth to get through that much information in an hour and a half. There's no way any other teacher besides Jesus could do such a thing. And yet if you sit there and you listen to him, if you listen to his word and you listen to what he's saying, your eyes will be opened and you will grow closer and closer to him as he teaches you what he wants you to do in this reality. And so now we have a choice here on Easter 2020. Easter 2020, this church and every church, the universal church of Christ, all who believe, have a choice to make. We can either be revitalized... And we can be resurrected as a a body of Christ. And we can embrace the passion that these disciples had as it was burning within them as they're learning from Jesus. Or we can bury our heads in the sand to what God is doing and what God's works are through these actions in this world today. That's our choice. The choice is mine. The choice is yours. What choice will we make here on Easter 2020? Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, thank you for this day and the blessings you've given us. Thank you, Lord, that whatever is going on in this world, we know you are sovereign and over all things. And that all things will be used to accomplish your will. Lord God, give us the courage to jump on to your work and allow you to work through us. Even though it's uncertain and we don't know what's going on, let us embrace you and your mission at this time. Let us rededicate ourselves on Easter 2020 as we remember the risen Christ that this church will be raised again in this world. In Christ we pray. Amen.